One of the most distinguished and remarkable places of ancient learning is located at about 95 kilometers southeast of Patna, the capital city of Bihar state in eastern part of India. The ruins of this place are unveiled in Bargao village within the alluvial plains south of river Ganges. The district in which it is located is named after it as Nalanda district. It not only holds an eminent position in India's history, but has influenced the whole of the Eastern world. The excavations reveal that it was an acclaimed Buddhist monastery in the ancient kingdom of Magadh. The highly exemplified method of learning inspired and in establishing institutional learning with functions and organization that made it comparable to modern universities. Some of such attributes are a planned outlay, formal structured organization, rigorous admission process, self-contained residential facilities, diversified curriculum, a rich library facility, award of degrees, etc. The place got its relevance after the exposition of the ceiling during excavation inscribed with the legend Sri Nalanda Mahaviharya Arya Bhikshu Sanghasa. The word Nalanda means charity without intermission. Much of the information about Nalanda is received from the writings of Chinese monk travelers Suanzang and Yi Jing of 7th century CE. About six centuries after its decline, the place got noticed in the 19th century CE by Buchanan, Kitto, Cunningham and Broadley. Systematic excavation of the ruins by the Archaeological Survey of India began in 1915 and ended in 1937. A second excavation took place in 1974 to 1982. Various archaeological findings suggest that the university was established by Kumar Gupta I of Gupta dynasty in the early decades of 5th century CE and was further patronized by King Harshavardhan of Kanauj in 7th century and the Pala rulers of East India from the 8th to the 12th century. Innumerable factors are responsible for the deterioration of the place. But the final blow came from the invasion of Bhaktiar Khilji in about 12th century when the institution was put to flames. Scientific excavations of Nalanda unearthed brick-built six temples and nine monasteries apart from some other smaller ones, arranged systematically, declaring Nalanda a unique planned establishment. The major monasteries and the temples are arranged in a row, running north-south with about 100 feet wide open space in between. Generally, monasteries face to the west and are placed on the east of the pathway. The temples face to the east and are placed on the west of the pathway. There are some more monasteries like 1A, 1B and some smaller ones. There are many H.A. shrines too. Further, there are many votive stupas clustered around temples and shrines. All the monasteries are similar in having a large central courtyard with row of cells and pillared veranda having well and furnace. There is a common entrance to the monastery, most of which were double-storied with a flight of steps in the southwest corner. On one side of the entrance, there is a secret chamber accessed from the cell in the front through a narrow opening. The most impressive monument is Temple No. 3, a solid brick structure standing in the middle of a court constructed in seven successive phases. The first three, relatively very small in dimension, are buried deep in the interior. The four later are extensive structures. The fifth phase construction of 5th century CE is best preserved. It has four corner towers with rows of niches containing stucco figures of Buddha 
and bodhisattvas. The three different staircases that can be seen to the north belong to the 5th, 6th and 7th extensions. These additions, by and large, followed the sequence plan of the prime structure. The shrine chamber on the top contained a colossal image of Buddha. Three Buddhist temples, number 12, 13 and 14, have undergone two periods of construction. The later temple having been built directly upon the ruins of an earlier one. The external facade is decorated with projecting niches and pilasters of various patterns. The central shrine on the upper terrace, accessible through a flight of steps on the eastern side. One Buddhist temple, known as Sarai Mound, was excavated in 1974 to 1982 and has yielded a temple having colossal Buddha image with traces of painting on its pedestal. The Brahminical Temple No. 2 has dado of 211 sculptured panels over the moulded plinth which implies the use of stone and brick, a unique feature at Nalanda. Accommodation for students is represented by cells while their daily requirement of food and drinking water is ensured from the furnace and well in the central courtyard of monasteries. An archaeological museum having all antiquities adds to the authenticity of the site. The stone and metal images of Pala period recovered from this site are said to form a distinct artistic tradition known as Pala School of Art or the medieval Eastern School of Art. Nowadays it is sometimes also called as Nalanda School of Art. The excavations in Nalanda show the evolution in Buddhist art and architecture from the 3rd century BCE to 12th century CE. Its structural layers reflecting different periods of construction, iconography of movable and immovable art objects reflected through stucco, stone and metal art images and records of scholars show unique development in art, architecture and planning. The planning system evident in the excavated remains shows, for the first time, the advent of a systematic approach in planning of an educational establishment. The Mahavihar's planning further demonstrates all essential infrastructures integral to a religious cum education complex, which can become and suitably develop into center of higher learning. The temple-like structure developed at Nalanda became the principal architecture of the Buddhists, replacing the traditional dominant hemispherical stupa. The standardization of architecture and proportion of a vihar into a perfect residential come educational infrastructure is also attributed to Nalanda Mahavihar. The site was declared centrally protected by Archaeological Survey of India in 1923. The scientific excavation as well as conservation has throughout remained in the professional hands of ASI. The conservation process is regulated by Conservation Manual of ASI framed in 1922, an Indian conservation policy formulated in 2014 by including updated contents of international norms and legislations and as such the integrity and authenticity of the site remains intact. The Central Archaeological Acts ensure appropriate protection of the site as well as its ambience. Nalanda is now contemplated for inclusion in the World Heritage List of UNESCO.